This was the way we got to know Maya Moore, a back-to-back -back national champion at UConn, a four-time WNBA champion with the Minnesota Lynx, and a two-time gold medalist for Team USA. Maya Moore, who has now been here so many times, I've lost track. I mean, <laughs> basically there's like a Maya Moore wing in the White House. Uh, yeah, and when she comes, we got all her stuff here. She's got a toothbrush. And... She is feeling it. 40 points for Maya Moore. 40. How do you stop her? You completed the season with the honor of being the only player in WNBA history to score in double figures literally in every game. But if you were really paying attention, you could see who Maya Moore really is, a lot more than just a basketball superstar. Four off-duty police officers providing security at the Minnesota Lynx game on Saturday staged a walk-off, refusing to provide security because of this. WNBA players wearing Black Lives Matter t-shirts. The captains at the time, Maya Moore, um, Lindsey Whaler, Rebecca Brunson, Simone Augustus, they wanted to do something, and the t-shirt spoke loudly. We knew that we might not have everyone be on our side about it, but accountability matters. And so if we see something happen in our backyard with Philando Castile, we want to have that accountability as a team that we see what's happening and we don't approve of it. It is time that we take a deep look at our ability to be compassionate and empathetic to those suffering from the problems that are deep within our society. I think we can all look back on the Minnesota Lynx in 2016, and we can say they were the catalyst for a lot of the social justice work you see in our league now. But for Maya Moore, that moment in 2016 was just the continuation of a journey fighting injustice she had been on for many years. A journey that in many ways began where she was born in Missouri, when she was introduced to a family friend in prison. My great uncle, we call him Papa, he had been involved in prison ministry for decades. And through a choir program of him volunteering at the Jefferson City Correctional Center, he met Jonathan. And then my godparents, Sherry and Reggie Williams, started to tell me about this young man that was wrongfully incarcerated. And they were investigating his case and helping him fight for his freedom. In 1997, Jonathan had been arrested at 16 for a burglary and shooting that he denied committing. But he'd been convicted as an adult and given a 50-year sentence. Maya's family had made it their mission to help him get released. At one of her visits, we just had stuff spread out everywhere. And Maya asked about it. And I asked her, would you like to get on his visiting list? I knew I was, I was good. I was safe if they are going and, and just wanted to meet Jonathan. I'll never forget it. Maya, she came in, she hugged me, and she looked me directly in the eye. And I just felt this, this sense of, of peace being around her. So Maya Moore, emerging basketball superstar, and Jonathan Irons, inmate number 101145 at Jefferson City Correctional Facility, began a friendship. She went off to college. You know, I would call her maybe once every two months, and then we started talking more frequently. And we became really, really good friends. We'd have conversations, and he would be encouraging me, and my mind would be blown. And I'm like, dude, you're in prison. How are you encouraging me? With the first pick in the 2011 WNBA draft, the Minnesota Lynx select Maya Moore from the University of Connecticut. As Maya's stardom and success grew, so too did her drive to fight for Jonathan, to find ways to shine a light on the injustice that had landed him in prison. My education journey ramped up. Then I started learning about prosecutorial what? You know, I, would, I didn't know anything about prosecutorial misconduct and learning how to say that over and over. Got with my agent and other resources and said, hey, should we start a nonprofit, you know? And so when with justice was born, when with Justice is a platform to talk about Jonathan's case, but also to, to help people get educated on uh, what's really going on and redefining what a win is in our justice system. 
There was no physical evidence, no DNA, nothing tying him to the scene of the crime. Cutting Maya Moore finds some space. I've just been on this journey of learning, having my eyes open, but it's connected to an actual person, and so it's very real to me. A power issue is a spiritual issue. Like, there's a heart issue that's making you not want to be generous with your power. We can talk about it all we want, but until you're willing to lay something down, <laughs> nothing's going to change. I can recall the day that she called me over to her apartment. You know, Maya's very, like, private. And I was a little skeptical at first, and then I was like, OK, did I do something wrong? <laughs> And then she got emotional, and she told me that this probably would be her last season. At the height of her career, Maya Moore stunned the sports world, stepping away from basketball to fight for justice and the release of one man, Jonathan Irons. That's a big, bold decision for someone who's arguably in the prime of their career, having incredible success, arguably one of the best players in the world in that moment to just walk away from that talent. But it wasn't shocking. You know, she was just about more than just basketball all the time. From that point on, Maya devoted herself full time to working to get Jonathan's conviction overturned. She launched a petition for Jonathan. It's one of the best feelings of giving somebody a voice. You're just one person. But then I realized when I give Jonathan a voice, so many other people get a voice. It wasn't just about spreading the word, though. Maya and her family worked with lawyers to uncover new evidence in Jonathan's case, evidence that prosecutors had failed to share with Jonathan's lawyers during the trial. Unfortunately, it's another step to another step, but it's a big step uh, to finally have the truth be told in, in this context. And that discovery got the attention of a judge. It will be the judgment of the court that the petitioner has established he is entitled to habeas relief on his Brady claim on orders that his convictions be vacated and the petitioner be discharged from custody. Oh, broken down. Another revelation in the story. Though they kept it quiet until Jonathan was released, they had fallen in love during the fight to get him freed. And soon after that day finally came, they were married in an intimate ceremony. Their life together is just beginning. As they continue their work side by side, Maya Moore says she is not finished. There are a lot more Jonathans out there, a lot more injustices to fight against, a world to lift up, one courageous step at a time. I hope it never gets lost in the shuffle that she probably could have four more championships by now, three more MVPs, a couple, you know, like she could have continued her career and st still been the top, the best in the game. I get that Maya is a generational talent, really and truly. And I can sit here and tell you that we're going to miss her on this Olympic team. And we've missed her on the national team the last couple years, without a doubt. She's that good. But if somebody feels that strongly about something and for their own well-being needs to do it, like, who are any of us to, to question that? Impact is not just about going far and wide. Impact, if we really look at it, is more about the narrow and deep. What Jonathan and I have done, what my godparents did, what my great uncle did, was narrow and deep. I hope my legacy can be connected to that.